Broadcasting from Singapore and broadcasting all around the world. You're listening to the EdTech Chat Podcast, taking the pulse of educators from all over the globe and bringing what you need every week. Now, over to your host, Craig Kemp. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the EdTech Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Kemp, and I'm thrilled to have your support. This podcast is sponsored by Schoolbox. Schoolbox is an all-in-one learning management system, community portal, and engagement platform for K-12 schools all over the globe. Schoolbox makes your life easy with everything you need at the touch of a button all in one place, so your school can connect, communicate, and collaborate with parents, teachers, students, and your school community from one platform. Get connected at schoolbox.com.au. The links are in the description below. As I've shared before, I continue to work with the incredibly talented Mark Quinn to improve the final audio quality of this podcast. He has his own podcast production studio that provides editing and mastering services to content creators. To connect with Mark, please see the details in the podcast notes below. Last week, I talked about creating, developing, and implementing a successful digital citizenship program in your school. This week, I wanted to talk about planning for the future, a topic that's coming up a lot recently with the work I'm doing with strategic planning with schools all over the world. As a teacher or leader in a school, how do you plan for the future? How do you justify your decision-making processes and develop a short, mid-term and long-term plan? What does it look like? How do you assess the success of these plans and how do you keep them up to date in order to be effective and sustainable? I'd love for you to have a chat with your colleagues about these questions and share your answers online. A lot of the work I do in schools is helping them develop in-depth answers to these questions, documenting them and implementing them. So this is a great place for you to start. I look forward to hearing from you on social media with your responses. Thank you for your questions that you continue to send in. This week, I wanted to answer one question from Joe in my home country of New Zealand. He emailed me and asked, Craig, you have talked in your podcast episodes to date about the importance of strategy and the why. I love it. In addition to this, you have recently mentioned the phrase, culture eats strategy for breakfast. I love this phrase and it's the first time I heard it, but I find it hard to build this within my school with a non-supportive leadership team. As a teacher with no say in the day-to-day running of the school, how do I help develop a positive experience in relation to EdTech and start to develop a positive culture so I can move down the track and create a strategy that every teacher buys into? Thank you for your question, Joe. Wow, I love it. And I've actually held off answering this for the past couple of weeks because I wanted it to tie into this week's episode, which is all about culture and planning with the future in mind. I'll do my best to answer this. And I know my chat with Tony Ryan coming up shortly will help, so stay tuned. I love the way you framed your question, Joe. I particularly love two quotes that are relevant here to help guide our discussion. Both I have shared before, and they're relevant in this context. The first is by Simon Sinek when he says, People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And the second is culture eats strategy for breakfast, which of course is the famous quote that you referred to from legendary management consultant and writer, Peter Drucker. To be clear, he didn't mean that strategy was unimportant, rather that a powerful and empowering culture was a surer route to organizational success. Successful organizations have an excellent culture at the core in the business world, and schools are no different. In order to enact that change, people need to believe in the strategic direction of the organization and, most importantly, in the people around them. People will buy in if they feel they're valued, listened to, and the direction will be helpful to them. What that means, to answer your question, Joe, is that as a teacher with no say in the day-to-day running of your school, you absolutely can help make change happen. It actually starts with you. If you're positive, willing to learn and grow, and be willing to be at the epicenter of change creation, You have a huge job to play, now more than ever. With the current COVID situation, as educators have a unique opportunity to stand up and have a voice in what education will be now and in the future, now is the perfect time for you to propose your solutions, with evidence, of course, to back it up, and a strategic plan in mind. Your job is to get your colleagues on the journey with you. Introduce small, incremental changes and give them the feeling of success. I love the teacher next door model, which essentially is all about giving teachers ideas and small success stories that they can implement in their classroom now. 
If I was wanting to move to a one-to-one -one device model, I would start dropping small bite-sized PD sessions into daily practice, invite teachers to drop by my class, and offer to plan the next unit with some tech infused. I would go above and beyond to make everyone feel comfortable and successful, and then I would share it loud and proud with my community and the world. Success breeds success, and you are in a perfect position to start that momentum. No matter what scale of change you're looking at, it starts with you, and it starts now. Start small, but think big. And if you need help, support, or ideas, don't hesitate to tweet me, email me, or reach out to me on any of my social media streams. I'm pretty good at responding, and I'm always willing to help. A tool that's positively impacted the authentic and purposeful use of technology into classrooms and meeting rooms that I have worked in is Metro Retro. Over the past few months, I've been running 99% of my business from home, thanks to Google Meets and Zoom, just like many of you. One of the issues I faced immediately when running online PD was engagement. I needed a tool to help participants feel like they were at my face-to-face -face PD sessions. I love to make my workshops interactive and fast-paced to keep people on their toes and engaged. When I was shown Metro Retro by my good friend and consultant buddy Andrew Mowat, I was all about it. Metro Retro is an incredibly powerful collaboration tool that allows teams that are remote or co-located to run productive, engaging, and fun sessions. Users join a shared board and add sticky notes to the various categories as they would in a traditional retrospective classroom or activity. Initially though, sticky note content is hidden to provide users a way of creating their ideas in private. Then, when they're ready, the users reveal their sticky notes to each other and discuss the ideas as a group. This is a great way to bring in the Zoom groups or Zoom meeting rooms. There are various tools available to aid presentation and discussion, including post-it highlighting, emoji reactions, and pointing arrows. Once the discussion is over, the contents of the board can be exported and archived in other tools or just left as is, and the boards are always available to come back to later. It successfully works on mobile, desktop, and tablet devices, and the best part about this? It's free. I know. I couldn't believe it either. I've shared some links in the descriptions below to get you started with Metro Retro. Enjoy and please share your thoughts. This week I wanted to give a little more advice and ideas around the theme of strategic planning and the importance of building short, mid and long term plans. Education changes so quickly and it's easy for us to lose track of our vision for the future when we're so invested in the now. It's critically important for us to stay ahead of the game and up to date. That's why I always suggest schools develop three parts to their EdTech strategic plans and include short, mid and long term goals. To achieve this is simple. For short term goals, think about now. In the next three to six months, what do you want to be able to achieve, develop and implement to support the authentic and purposeful integration of technology in your school. A short-term goal might be to set up some pop-in PD sessions for teachers, or to create a student tech group to aid student agency. Something easy enough to do and implement with very little support or investment from others. Pause this podcast now and write down the first two short-term goals that come to your mind. Go. Now that you've written those down, think about the midterm. Midterm is 6 to 18 months. What can you do in the next 6 to 18 months that build on and develop your short term goals, but help you move towards the long term goals that you set? In the next 6 to 18 months, what's a change or significant thing you can move towards adapting, changing, or creating that'll make a significant impact on your school's developmental journey with technology? Midterm goals often a middle point achievements of your long term goals, so you might want to think about that too. Midterm goals are often linked directly to long term goals and could include purchasing of items, large scale training programs, or even curriculum integration of non-negotiables as an example. Pause the podcast and write down your first two midterm things that come to mind. Long term goals. Long term goals are often two to three or even four to five years in the future. These are hard to get to because, as mentioned, things change so fast in our world today. These are often adapted and changed over time, but are more symbolic than anything else. Long term goals help you achieve long term strategic intents. Some examples include moving to a one to one or BYOD program, or rolling out the ISTE standards for students and educators as a framework 
and would include multiple short and mid-term goals, like developing a digital citizenship program, as mentioned in last week's podcast episode, or integrating computational thinking and coding into experiences school-wide. Pause the podcast and write down some long-term goals for your school. Where do you want to be in two to three years' time when it comes to educational technology? You might also want to think about changing your midterm and short-term goals to fit with your long-term intentions now. Go! We purposefully went from short-term to long-term so you can think about the progression of these goals. It's important that once you get to your long-term goals that you go back and adjust and change your mid- and short-term goals too. It's a great first step in this learning journey. A really important part of this is implementation. And of course, this means trying new things and solidifying current things. As you embark on the strategic journey, ask yourself what is important and have people around you that are willing to take risks, try new things and implement change. Now is the perfect time to be rewriting what is important for education and learning with technology at your school. I hope you get the opportunity to explore these ideas and complete the short tasks I set for you above. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Please share me your ideas and don't hesitate to ask your questions. I'm always happy to help. Every week, I bring you a short interview with some of my edu heroes, an engaging learning experience with someone who makes a difference in education every day, with a particular focus or angle towards educational technology. This week, I had the pleasure of chatting with thought leader, keynote speaker, futurist, and longtime connection of mine, Tony Ryan. Let's have a listen. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Tony Ryan. You might know him as at Aussie Tony on Twitter. Tony was one of my first Twitter connections and still inspires me today. Tony and I connect regularly and I always walk away energized. Tony is an educator, innovator, and futurist. He's a consultant with many schools and universities globally and is a highly sought after keynote speaker on the conference circuit. On top of all of this, he's also an international best-selling author of eight books. Tony, I don't know how you do it, but it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Are you ready to talk about education and technology integration? Hi, Craig. Uh, great to be with you, and yes, I am. Let's go. Why don't you start by telling us about your current role and what inspires you to do what you do? Well, I'm an independent education advisor, and specifically, I call myself an education futurist. And no, that doesn't mean I can predict the future. I have no idea, especially around this time in human history. I help educators to prepare for the future as compared to like try and predict it. I specifically work on thinking skills. So most of my work with schools is around how to help children to think more effectively. Uh, I actually believe everything comes down to the quality of our thinking. And I mean everything. I love that. And I, it's something that I've noticed that you've always stood for and always promoted as well as that the future of education is where we should be focusing on and working towards. And I think you have so much insight into what's going on in the world. What excites you about education today? Well, I'll tell you what, given recent circumstances, I am just in awe of the very proactive response from educators, you know, especially over the past few months. Uh, teachers have modelled what it means to be a learner in spite of being totally lost on occasions, and I'm proud of them all. I noticed a parent once calling for a hashtag about a month ago uh, that went pay teachers double, and I can see why. You know, So that's one thing that I absolutely love. And, I mean, there are so many other things like the pending applications with some of the disruptive technologies, You know, like the mis mixed realities with VR and AR. Uh, I love the renewed focus on capabilities, which is more than just a skill. You know, so we're, I'm seeing that coming through around the world, the focus on uh, resilience, on initiative, on adaptive agility. I love the way that I'm seeing teachers waking up to the new time management. I mean, most of them work too hard. They spend too long on their work. However, they're finally waking up to how the new time management is to not do everything by yourself, but to find someone else who's already done it, who can help you. And, you know, the vast majority of educators love supporting each other. And, you know, if I can even maybe put in one more in terms of what excites me about education today... I think it's the whole future role for educators, you know, given what has happened in 2020 anyway. But in the years ahead, I reckon it will be educators who will guide us into that sustainable and equ equitable future, you know, the one that we all want, you know, the so-called new normal. And I reckon educators will have so much to contribute to that. So that gets me excited. It's really exciting to hear you talk about that. And for me, it's, it's something that energizes me also. The work I do with schools now and with ed tech companies is all focused on the way 
that educational technology can be integrated to add value to learning. What's your best advice for the educators listening today in relation to edtech? You know, it's not just the technology that improves the learning. It's still the quality of the teaching and the use of the tools. You know, it, what really matters is that learning quality matters more than ever. And that's why we need to seriously look at digital pedagogies, you know, like uh, the deep understanding, the depth of engagement, to, you know, the rich inquiry and thinking. Uh, you know, in America, they sometimes talk about going an inch wide and a mile deep rather than the other way around. And I think we need to go into more depth and substance with what we're doing. So that's probably one of my big suggestions. You know, don't just digitize the old ways of teaching. There's no sense in doing something just on a screen, just because it used to be done on a piece of paper, if it doesn't improve the learning. You know, in terms of what to do about that, I'd really encourage teachers to find a decent taxonomy in terms of ed tech implementation. So the SAMR model rules supreme, you know, for the last decade, and rightly so. It was a great framework. You know, I love the, the one that comes from Sonny Magana. Uh, I think the book's called Disruptive Classroom Technologies. And he reckons that there are three levels of the applications of tech. Now, bear with me with the big words here. The first one's translational. Back in the 1990s, where we're into automation and consumption, then we got into transformational, which is probably where we are now with you know production and contribution. Uh, the one that I love is his transcendent. I know it sounds fancy, but that's where the future is with technologies. One is inquiry design. So it's children knowing how to connect with the world and develop their own inquiry and resolve it. And another one is social entrepreneurship, and the technology allows that. You know, so very exciting things we can do. Maybe a big thought on this is we need to combine the humanity with the technology. I have some concern when the technology starts to take over. I think there's a, a, a brilliant balance there between the tech and our humanity. So that means we have to keep being with kids. We have to show we're deep human beings who really care about what we're doing. You know, I heard someone say once that technology can be a great accelerator. You know, but the teachers are the multipliers. So the technology can accelerate the learning. Teachers, though, are the multipliers who know how to connect with lots of people and take it further. So, you know, there are a few thoughts. My, maybe my wrap up one on your question is, you know, I, I have some concern that in a, a future education era, maybe in the next few years, it might be driven by, you know, efficiencies and austerity. Politicians are going to focus more on some sort of mass produced education for the majority you know, like delivering an impersonal video to 10,000 students at a time. Uh, I, I, had, I feel great concern with that one. So, you know, I actually want to see teachers connecting still with children, but taking advantage of the technologies. Yeah, and I think from what you've talked there, I think one of my big takeaways and something you finished on was that tech can be a wonderful servant, but it's a lousy master. And I think that's something for everyone listening today to really hold on to. And I talk about this a lot, but um, it's not what you know, it's it's who you know in a lot of cases, but when it comes to educational technology, you must know your why. If you can't justify why you're using technology and it doesn't add to your learning value, then don't use it at all is always my motto. And Tony, we've, we've been connected for some time now and I've learned so much from you and everything you've done, both face-to-face -face at conferences, but also online and in my professional learning network. Tell us a little bit about your professional learning networks. Where do you engage and who should we be connecting with? Oh, Craig, you for a start. And I'm not necessarily trying to butter you up here. Uh, you just deserve the acc accolades. I would love to see more people doing in their everyday teaching what you've done during your teaching. And that is, you know, make massive support systems, build them up so people are supporting each other. I'm a real eclectic. You know, generally, I have a ground rule, and that is that I will not follow someone uh, who wants to reinforce just the status quo from the 2010s, uh, and especially when they focus on what's wrong with the world. Uh, I, I much prefer very perceptive educators who always look for what can be accomplished. You know, my one-liner for them is uh, I call them realistic optimists. So they're not, you know, uber optimists. They're also not pessimists. They're just 90% of the way along the line. So they're constantly looking for how they can create the future. And there's a blunt point, by the way, with, you know, your professional learning network, look for people who want to create the future as compared to perhaps predict it, which is nearly impossible. Or well, funnily enough, the best way to predict it is to create it. You know, other, look, you've had some uh, guests on this fantastic podcast, you know, Kath and, and George are just superb, you know, so I follow them, you know, extensively. Kath puts out, you know, beautiful comments that are really worth going into in depth. 
I've always been deeply impressed with one Australian educator called Joan Dalton. Joan's a, a close friend anyway, and we talk every couple of months. So her wisdom for education is astonishing. Now, she's written some books in the last couple of years called Learning Talk. I cannot recommend them highly enough. She's also got a new book coming out, you know, that takes that further. Point is, she is one of the best educators around. She is worth following. So, you know, there are a few thoughts in terms of my, you know, professional learning network. Great points, uh, Tony. Thank you for that. And thinking about educational technology in general and the technology you use, point us to a tool or an ed tech tool that you currently love using in your day-to-day -day work. <laughs> well, it depends on what you call a tech tool, Craig. Uh, I tend not to choose the tools. I tend to go with what you were talking about with purpose before. You know, I, I work out what I needed to get done uh, with, you know, the tool. Then somehow the tool seems to find me, even though I do go searching for it. I've always loved hashtags. And a big reason for that, by the way, I hear too many people complaining that in the so-called modern world that is absolutely swamped with data, they can't find anything. And yet I think it's the opposite. I think because of the technology, it's easier to find things these days. And that's why hashtags are so powerful, especially the education hashtags. And, you know, the reason why we need to use those, those is because of the concept called curation. Uh, it, I think it's one of the most important thinking skills in the world today. Curation is when you can cut down to the core essence what it means when you're reading very complex material. So that's where I start a lesson by saying, okay, gang, just before we finish here, I'm going to ask you to tell me what you believe were the three core points out of what we addressed during this lesson. So you get them to curate as much as possible. And the technology helps you with that. I must admit, I've always loved WordPress, even though it's about a decade old. I'm working on a new blog at the moment called Beautiful Ideas, and it's in my new Thinkers Key site. And so I'm having all sorts of fun, you know, remembering and relearning how to actually use something like that. You know, funnily enough, just to wrap up on your question as well, again, depending on what you call an ed tech tool, because of circumstances in the past month, I've needed to make a lot of videos. And a couple of weeks ago, I was making a video for a whole group of Russian teachers, tens of thousands of them. And I made the video on my webcam and sent it off to them. And they said, we are so sorry, the quality is not good enough. And I realized I had to go and buy a decent webcam. And what I love about that is that it triggered me into reshaping my thinking, because then I had to think of more effective ways of reaching people online, which, by the way, is a concept called andragogy. Now, most people know of pedagogy, which is the art and science of learning for young people, but andragogy is the science of learning for over 18-year-olds. And the best education happens when we focus on both pedagogy and andragogy. So you see, I had to really think through the andragogy principles as I had my new webcam. So it wasn't the webcam that did it for me. It was the stimulus to actually think differently. Yeah, and I think that leads into where I want to go with this conversation now as well, which is that learning is so important to all of us. And that andragogy for us as, as adult learners means that we need to constantly strive to be better. And as educators, that's what we do every day. Can you recommend to us, Tony, one book or resource that you've been reading lately or just one of your all-time favorites and tell us why we should be exploring it? Oh, I love to read like amazing thinkers. However, I'm after ones who are sometimes outside the education world because I think that they can offer us some very interesting perspectives. Uh, they can beautifully inform us on our practice. Uh, I've always loved Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, he's written uh, several books. Uh, the one that I particularly liked was called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. I would recommend it strongly to anyone. In fact, I'm reading a book at the moment by a Canadian philosopher called uh, Jordan Peterson. Not everyone agrees with this guy, though I'm really taking to the book. It's called 12 Rules for Life. It's probably a variation on those ones I used to write about how everything you needed to know you learned in kindergarten, uh, though this is the adult version of it, and I just love it. You know, in fact, I would love teachers to connect more with futuristic blogs and thinking because, you know, I mean, we're the ones creating the future, so we need to inform our own futuristic thinking. Uh, so to wrap up on your question there, there are two that I just love. One is, a, I think, a Swiss guy. His name's Gerd Lenard, so G-L-E-O-N-H-A-R-D. He puts out some great material. And then a futurist in Sydney called Ross Dawson, uh, simply at R-O-S-S-D-A-W-S-O-N. Uh, they're both worth a follow if you are serious about working out how the future might be created and generated. 
And we'll make sure that all of these links are in the podcast description below as well. And just on that note, um, I, I want to also endorse Gerd and Ross in their work as futuristic thinkers as well. And I follow their work just like I follow yours extremely closely. Now, on top of all of this, Tony, and the work you do every single day, which, by the way, is very, very inspiring, you are also a published author of not just one, not two, but eight books. Tell us about your books and what inspired you to write them. Oh, Craig, I love to generate ideas. You know, I can sit around all day and produce hundreds of them. It's like I wrote some material called The Thinker's Keys, and that's one such example. And that's you know, what we talked about at the start where, you know, we want to help the world to think effectively. So the, the concept of generating ideas, knowing that it might help teachers in classrooms just gets me as high as 10 kites. I mean, really excited. Now, my latest book is called The Next Generation. And haven't I scored some flack over the subtitle because it was preparing today's kids for an extraordinary future. And people are going, so you call this extraordinary? And I go, can you wait a while? because I actually think there are a lot of amazing things that are going to happen up ahead, partly as a result of what's been happening this year. Uh, so, you know, I love, you know, addressing that. I love doing the research to substantiate what I'm saying with it. Yeah, I just enjoy really creating new ideas and provoking thinking. Everything about our chat today, Tony, has, again, like I said at the beginning, it's really got me thinking and inspired to go away and do more research and and jump on the energy that you always bring to a conversation. I know our listeners are really going to want to follow and connect with you. What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, let me see. Twitter at Aussie Tony, A-U-S-S-I-E-T-O-N-Y. And for the fun of it, they could go to thinkerskeys.com and they'll find this new blog of mine called Beautiful Ideas. And essentially, I'm just tracking down ideas that just really inspire me and I'm just putting them into that blog as well. You know, my wrap up on that, Craig, is probably two idea, two simple words that have always driven me with all of this in terms of getting in touch with me and the work I do. The two words of all things are aha and wow. Aha is when you wake up to something. It's when you go, oh, now I get it. And any teacher knows that when it happens with a child and it makes you feel pretty impressive. It makes a child feel even better. It's when they get it. Wow is just just the beautiful you know, possibility that you see in something. It's when you see something for the first time. And you just go, wow, when you look at that, there are two trillion stars in the sky. So aha and wow, drive it. Uh, though there are the connections that people can go to if they wish. And all of the links are in the podcast description below. So people can click through and find all of those. Tony, thank you so, so much for your inspiration and your time today. It is my honor, Craig, and thank you. Next week, join me for episode 11 of the EdTech Chat podcast, when I'm joined by a leader in education globally, and CEO of Getting Smart, Tom van der Ark. Next week, we'll also go into more depth about school culture and how to build that culture that we talked about today in order to be successful with the integration of technology. One of the things I love doing is giving away prizes as a thank you for tuning in, listening, and hopefully subscribing to the EdTech Chat podcast. Last week, Schoolbox gave away one hour of free consultancy support to help you create a more seamless EdStack. To win, you needed to complete the form at bit.ly slash edtechwin. The winner has already been contacted directly by me, and it is Kerry Weaver. Congratulations, Kerry. Also last week, Susan McLean gave away three copies of her book, Sex, Texts, and Selfies, How to Keep Your Child Safe in the Digital Space. The winners of the books are Dylan Cooper, Donovan Hall, and Heather Bernard. Congratulations, Dylan, Donovan, and Heather. This week, our sponsor, Schoolbox, is giving away another one hour of free consultancy to help you create a more seamless EdStack. This hour can be used however you want, so get entering. In addition this week, Tony Ryan has given us three copies of his book, The Next Generation, and three sets of his Thinker's Keys to give away. For more information about the books and his world-famous Thinker's Keys, please see the links in the description below. To win the hour of consultancy support from Schoolbox and the copies of Tony's book and Thinker's Keys, you need to go to bit.ly slash edtechwin and complete the simple form. It will literally take you one minute to do. I'm not even asking you to answer a question this week. The link is in the description below. Competition closes on Wednesday the 15th of July and the winners will be contacted directly by me and announced on next Friday's podcast episode. Good luck. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, please smash that subscribe button and share it with your colleagues, friends and families. I really do appreciate your support. Please remember to spend two minutes to rate this podcast too, so we can reach even more educators and edtech enthusiasts globally. I can't believe I'm already at episode 10. Please share your favourite part of today's episode by tagging me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn. And don't hesitate to ask me questions that I can answer in an upcoming episode. Remember, you have the chance to win as well. Check out the links in the description below for more, and I'll see you again next week. Thank you for listening to the EdTech Chat Podcast. Creating a community for educators to learn, share, and grow. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode and be in the drawing to win prizes every week. If you know others that would enjoy the show, please hit that share button and brighten their day. Join us again next week for your weekly EdTech hit with at Mr. Kemp NZ. We'll see you again soon.